bright and early. From today traffic through traffic Sunday, traffic I will be working 77 hours. The left the week. I like it. Me too. Got to be make it time. Okay, we got upward traffic. Do you think we could back taxi? Uh, ask if anybody's base or final. I don't see anybody, but... Hey, Carlos, you see us? We're uh, at 1,700 feet on a 45. Yeah, we got you on site. We'll follow you on. Crew traffic. Uh, is anyone on base or final? Nothing. Let's go ahead. Back taxi 8. Crew traffic. Warrior 438 here. Libya back taxi. Runway 8. Crew traffic. Crew traffic. Cessna 2600. Circle back left. Crosswind for runway 8. All right, he's on the crosswind. Yeah, that other guy's down there, way still. I don't see anybody base or final. We should be good. What's your total time right now? Uh, that's about 55 hours. 55. Well, if we include the sim time, it's gonna be closer to uh, 60. Okay. Just turn left downwind for runway. So you have about 10 or 15 towards your IFR then? Um, for closer. No, we have six in the sim. And then we did a 1.1 flying the other day. Okay. That's it so far. Ain't yeah. canceled every other time. Hey, Casey. Go ahead. Just wanted to say, hey, Casey. <laughs> You're just that popular, bro. I guess so. Is Shake coming in tonight? No, Peyton uh, picked up his shift because Jake had to meet his plumber, I guess. All right. Perfect traffic, Cessna 2000, Chichuga, Tenefe, Perfect traffic, Warrior 438, Sierra Lima, clear the active. Even the air blowing in is hot. Yeah, I know, right? That's why we get a little bit of altitude. That should help things out, I hope. <laughs> you wanna... Uh, we'll go over to Parch Brief. All right, we can go ahead and line up and wait runway eight. Crippa traffic, Warrior 438 Sierra Lima, uh, line up and wait, runway 8, Crippa traffic. Oh. Yeah, those hoods aren't the most comfortable pieces of equipment out there. Not at all. Especially with a headset and hat. Yeah. Runway 8, we check the compass, compass. check the heading, All right. everything looks good. Everything looks good. Alright, is he clear yet? Not quite. Okay. Alright, he's clear now. Alright, I'm under the hood. Go for traffic, 157 Sierra Kilo is clear the active crew. Crew traffic, Warrior 438 Sierra Lima, departing runway 8, crew for traffic. Alright. It interesting, right? Yeah, kind of freaky. <laughs> Watch your heading. Oh, we're just fly runway heading because we have obstacles out here, right? Yeah, I'm just gonna take it for a little while. All right, your controls. My flight controls. I'll bring us back on uh, the runway heading. A little bit right of the runway heading now that we drifted. Right, I've got you on a 090 heading. Let's go ahead and hold that. Your airplane, go ahead and trip it out. You've got a lot of nose down pressure on it. Those wings level. 090 heading, keep that scan up. Yep, nice little corrections. Uh, what are we climbing to? We'll go ahead and climb up to 3,000. Alright. 
Alright, we're at a good safe altitude here now. Let's go ahead and chart a right turn heading 180. Just nice standard right turn at heading 180, continuing our climb at 80 knots. Still keeping the speed right at 80, standard right turn, coming around, a little bit more right rudder. Keep that ball in the center. The more coordinated you stay, especially when you're in the clouds, the less likely you're going to get to have the uh, illusion that your instruments aren't telling you the truth. Right, let's try to keep it as close to 80 as we can, so p using pitch for uh, the speed, right? Because pitch plus power equals performance. We have the performance already all the way up, right? We can't, we can't add any more power than we have, so we're going to have to use pitch, right, to maintain that speed that we want. Yeah. All right, we can let Griffith know we're departing the area to the south. Griffith traffic, Warrior 438, Sierra Lima departing the tra pattern to the south. Griffith traffic. Awesome. A little hazy out here today, but uh, looks like we're mainly clear. I'm going to go ahead and dial in 2217 just in case, see if anybody's up in the practice area. We're still receiving on 23, but we are on 2217. Anybody over on 2217? Anybody up? Doesn't sound like anybody's up in the practice area, but we'll give it another shot once we get out a little bit further. So what got you into flying in the first place, Casey? Um, when I was nine years old, I watched the Blue Angels perform at the Gary Air Show. And uh, it was that moment that I said I was going to be a pilot. Now back then I said I was going to be a fighter jet pilot, <laughs> but uh, then I realized I'm 6'3 and uh, not quite built to be a fighter jet pilot. So uh, then I thought I wanted to go cargo in the military, right? And then I did my like research and I found out how hard it was to become a pilot in the military and decided commercial is the right route for me. Sounds good. Yeah, I couldn't put up with all those push-ups. <laughs> <laughs> Once we get everything stabilized here at uh, 3,000, let's just try to hold 80 knots at 3,000. So that'll be the plan, adjusting our pitch and our power to get exactly the performance that we want. All right. Because that's what a lot of the IFR is. It's it's good. It's adjusting your pitch and your power to get exactly what you want, whether that's in a climb, whether that's in a descent, whether that's straight and level flight, just a cruise. So a lot of that stuff that we don't look at as closely Maybe as a VFR pilot just chilling around is something that we have to really pay attention to when we're flying IFR. Yeah. For various reasons. Um, IFR, obviously, it's much more controlled, so they might ask you to fly a certain speed. Probably not in a smaller GA aircraft, but as you get into the larger aircraft, they will. And then, uh, so you want to get those rudimentary skills down. But then also, just the smooth control motions of power and pitch will help you when you're really in the clouds, flying a real IMC, and you can get confused and, or disorientated so easily if you have rapid motions at all. Like even a rapid level off. Your, your level off was nice and gentle, came down, the power started to come back, nice and smooth, and that's what you want to be in the clouds. I've been flying with some guys and they come up there and then they get to their altitude and they just all at once just pitch it right down. Well this can create an illusion sometimes that you're either in a turn or that you're in a dive and then the person automatically starts pitching back and all of a sudden you end up three, four hundred feet higher altitude than what you're supposed to be at. Which is not good. Alright, watching our altitude a little bit, you might have to add a little bit of power, pitch the nose up and touch the touch because you're already at the speed you want. Yeah, let's go ahead and just start a standard right turn to heading of 270. Right turn 270. Right turn 270. Wing up, left base for runway 2, 735 Keeping that scan up, not fixating on any one instrument. Try not to peek out the side to get a cheat of the reference to the horizon on the outside, which is something that we all like to do, but just try to make it, force yourself to stare at your instruments because when you're in the cloud for real and you don't have a CFI with you, there's no cheating out the side and there's no backup of, hey, you got the flight controls because I'm a little confused of what's going on here. So the more you try to keep it real in the training environment, the less uh, worried you'll be once you're actually in the 
in the cloud yourself for the first time by yourself. All right, looking pretty good. We got 3,000, just a touch above 80 on our speed, so we're looking good that way. Let's go ahead and start a descent down to 2,500, but let's stay at 80 knots and descend at 500 feet a minute. So I want 500 feet a minute. I want you to stay at 80 knots, and I want you to go from 3,000 down to 2,500. Doing good, how you feeling? Good. Good. This is starting to get a little cool. Traffic chance, looks like the Anybody up in the practice there? Anybody up? Nobody that wants to admit it. <laughs> All right, 2,500. We level off here and keep the speed at 80. We're within standard still. But we're looking pretty good. Looks like everybody's having fun down there on Cedar Lake. Nope, you're not allowed to look. Okay, cool. <laughs> All right, we're I can just imagine. Everyone's just enjoying it. Yeah, exactly. And here we are up here sweating in a little uh, Piper Warrior. How about that? Yeah, but we're so here to do a clearing turn for me. I know you're going to be under the hood, so basically what I want you to do is just turn a left uh, heading to 180, and I'm going to be looking for an aircraft. Once you get on a heading of 180, I just want you to go right back to 270. All right. I'm just going to get up to altitude here. All right. Sounds like a winner. You get that airspeed under control. Yeah. Without having to yank on the power too dramatically. Alright, cool. Let's go ahead and get into that turn to 180. Alright. Nice standard rate turn. So, a standard rate turn at 90 degrees, how long should that take us? Uh, 90 degree turn? Yep, just a 90. 30 seconds. All right, cool. Because the full 360 will take us how long? Two minutes. Two minutes, right. Cool. So it's good to reference that because when you start to make that turn, kind of glance up at your compass and then look at your timer. And then as you're rolling out, if all of those match, then you're good. If one of them is way off, then that's kind of a cue that, hey, one of my instruments is lying to me. Now you have to break down and see which one it is. All right, looking good over here, looking clear. Once we get done with this clearing trick, we're gonna do something that we don't do in the clouds, but I just want us to practice it so that in case we accidentally do it, we know how to kind of get ourselves out of it. So we're gonna go ahead and do a steep turn to the left, steep turn to the right, once you're on a heading of 270. So basically you can pick right or left, I don't care which way you go with it. Um, so one to the left or right um, to start out. So we're just gonna do a 360 steep turn, Staying at 2,500, keeping it as close to 80 knots as we possibly can. And then once we get back on a west heading, then we'll roll out and just get, let everything stabilize. So it's going to be a steep turn instead of the standard rate turn that we usually would do right. in the clouds. Keeping that scan up nicely. Keep it in the steep turn. Scan up, keep it in the steep turn. Right, let's go ahead and turn to heading of 180. Staying at 80 knots to 2,000. Actually, staying at 80 knots and let's climb up to 3,000. In a climbing, left turn to heading 180. All right, so we just went from a heading of west to south. So what would we expect if we were making that turn off of our compass? Um, accelerate north, uh, accelerate north, oh wait, that's some knots. Yep. Uh, shoot, where is it? A good thing that I like to remember is UNOS. UNOS. U-N-O-S. Undershoot north, overshoot south. Oh, okay. So undershoot that's kind north, of a good reminder. South. Yeah. Okay. You were probably thinking of ANTS. A-N-D-S. 
which would be accelerate north, decelerate south. Yeah. So basically when you are going east and west, east or west, if you accelerate or decelerate, if you accelerate, it's going to... Um, it's going to show your compass initially will show a turn to the north, even though you're not turning north. And then it, when you decelerate rapidly, you're going to show that uh, that turn to the south there. So the ands and then the unos are the two things that you want to keep in mind when you're when we're doing compass turns. I know that one that we were just doing wasn't a compass turn, but it's just something that you want to keep in mind to make sure that you're always matching your compass up with your um, DG directional gyro. That makes sense? Yeah. All right, let's go ahead and uh, turn to the east now. Just a standard rate turn. 3,000 feet, 80 knots. Standard rate turn to the east. Heading 090. All right, let's go ahead and do a power off stall. All right. Uh, you so just like you normally would as a VFR pilot, but this time you're just looking at your instruments. To recover and you can recover at the first sign of a buffet not the stall warning warrant but the actual buffet all right let that white arc Watch your heading. Oh. All right, our speed, we got a positive rate of climb. Whoa. The one off at 3,000. Forget to do fuel pump. That uh, and what else? There we go. Last notch of flaps. We'll get rid of those. Let's go ahead and turn to the north. And what I want to see this time is I want to see a descent before you go into your stall. Um, you kind of just like climbed up a little bit and went into your stall. A power off stall should be an established descent, right? That's what the standards are saying now. So basically, it's like you're coming in as if you're coming in on an approach and then for whatever reason you get distracted or whatever and level off and basically just stall the airplane at that point uh -huh. and then just level off you don't need to pitch up and out just level off and at, by trying to hold altitude you'll naturally start pitching up right your angle of attack will start yeah. coming up but you don't need to pull it up necessarily into the stall is what i'm trying to say so get configured, hold 3,000 for now. Oh, so hold okay. your 3,000, let the airspeed start bleeding off. Then get configured for descent. Establish the descent as if you were coming in to land. And then let's say once you get down to 2,800, then you just level off. Try to hold 2,800 until you get up into the stall and then recover. Okay, so at the point where at 2,800, we shouldn't have any power in? Correct. Okay. So let's go ahead and get back up to 3,000. Push the nose up, get up to 3,000. All right, we'll get leveled off here. As we level off, bring the power back. We don't need to gain a bunch of extra speed. All right, so now you're clear for the approach. Go ahead and start your descent like you normally would into an airport, uh, get, getting yourself configured and everything. So descent checklist and coming in for a landing, right? So get yourself configured. There's 10, then bringing on 20. And bring it on full. Keeping your heading straight. Keep it coming down. Establish your descent. Keep it coming down. Power to idle. And then just try to hold 2,800 now. So just hold 2,800 and hold your heading. Hold your heading. Hold your heading. Hold your heading. All right, recover. Keeping an eye on your instruments, keeping an eye on your heading, nicely done, get it all under control, at good airspeed, get yourself back up in a pitch up position, we 
we have positive rate of climb. We can get rid of all the rest of the flaps and continue our climb up. Let's go ahead and uh, do a left turn heading 270. All right. Anybody up in the back there? Anybody up? Nobody's up having fun today, huh? Guess not. They heard you're going to be in the sky. Yeah, that's pretty scary. Yeah. They, I want to clear they, the way. They cleared the area. They're like, <laughs> whoa, whoa, whoa. Casey's going to be up. Traffic alert 435 and take it to part of the area to the south curve. Ah, there's somebody coming to join us. All right, so basically we're going to get the airplane set up here uh, for a power on stall. So around rotation speed, you'll just add full power and pitch the nose up until you get the buffet and recover. Watching the air heading. So, wait, can you talk to that one more time? Okay, so basically you start bringing the power back. Bring the power back to probably like right around ah, 14, 13, 14, right in there, and then just hold 3,000. All right, as the airspeed decays off, once you get to rotation speed, which is what in this airplane? 80. Uh, rotation speed? Well, me and Mike like to get it to 80 because of how much weight we had. Okay. Well, what's the what's the checklist that it's the rotation speed? Oh, I can't remember now. All right, so we're just going to use 60 for now. Okay. I think it's right around 55, 60. So we'll uh, use that as the uh, rotation speed. I'll look at the checklist real quick. Yeah, accelerate to 45, 55. So 55, we're at that. So we'll go ahead and add full power, hold the heading of west, and pull up into the stall. Watch your heading. All right, there's the buffet, recover. Watching your heading. Yeah, so there's your rotation speed, 45, 55, and then back pressure, and then we climb out at 79. I think that's what you were thinking. Oh, probably. But rotation speed is 55. I like 55, 60, but it says 45 to 55. So we'll just use 55, 60, because well, we're up a little higher. We have a higher density altitude. Let's go ahead and try that again. We lost quite a bit of heading in that. So okay. let's go ahead and bring the power back. Let the airspeed decay off till about 60, 55, 60. Add full power, pitch the nose up, but watching your heading, keeping that scan up so that we keep our heading. We stall, recover. All right, bring that power back a little bit, maybe closer to 12 or 13, because we're not decaying airspeed enough. There's 60, add power in, holding our west heading, bringing the nose up, so we get a nice little buffet, keeping our scan up, keeping our scan up, keeping our scan up, and buffet recovered. Nose comes down, airspeed is increasing, we got it under control. Nice job holding your heading, we're back at 3,000. We'll get our airspeed like right around 80, and we should be good. All right, so when I think of doing an approach, there's a few things that we like to go over with it. I like to use the bees first. So we build it, bug it, and then we brief it. There, I'm gonna go ahead and be on there. Frequency, I'm still monitoring 2217. What do you want to get down to? Uh, 2,500 for now. All right. All right. And let's not do too crazy of corrections because then we're going to blow right through. You can kind of use your map to cheat a little bit and realize you're almost right over it. So you want to start heading your heading back to match this, right? Yeah. All right. Because otherwise we're going to do those crazy S turns all the way up and down the approach and that gets really awkward and embarrassing, right? <laughs> so we don't want to do that. So 2,500, we're coming in on it. I know we just added a lot more workload because you were doing really good before and it seems like we're kind of going a little crazy. So just calm it down, kind of think about where you are, try to visualize where you are if you were just flying VFR and be like, okay, I want to point my nose this way. And then if you start getting off a little bit, well, make those slight corrections that'll help you, all right? So that identified. And then we're going to go ahead and brief it. When I think of a brief, I think of what we call a want brief. So W-A-N-T. Checking on there, you want to pull up the yeah, door A, and then watch our airspeed so it doesn't degrade, and watch our altitude as well. Okay? The notums is the end part of the want briefing, so weather, the airport, we talked about the airport, right? Yeah. The notums, we talked about the notums, the notum, the only notum that we have is that we can't shoot this approach at night, right, because of the trees. And then the T and the want briefing is the threats. What kind of threats do we have? Well, the biggest threat that we have right now... Trees. Um, we do, well, not right now because it isn't at night, so we have no problem that way. The biggest threat that we actually have 
because we actually pick a real threat is that we're teaching right now. So you're under the hood and you're just relying on me to be watching out. Well, I can easily get sucked in by this approach play trying to teach you and be get distracted and so on and not do my job of watching out. So our biggest threat is that we're in a training environment. So at any point in time you don't feel comfortable, you don't like something, you can speak up and let us know. We'll mitigate that by keeping each other honest that way. I'll keep outside the airplane. If you're, if you, if we don't understand a transmission of one of the people in the pattern or whatever, we, we can query them about that. All right, we're on a heading now of 039, right? So let's roll out 039 to intercept, right? Let's get back there. 039? Uh, 039, that is correct. That's what it says right there, right? 039, am I reading that right? No, you're right. Okay, 039 to intercept the what radio? So once again, we made a turn. So turn, time twist, talk track. So we turned, we time it. We need to uh, track it, obviously, but do we need to twist? Yes, we do need to twist. What do we need to twist to, though? Uh, the radio, uh, zero eight four. Yes, that's what we need to twist to because we want to intercept that. Once it starts coming in, then we'll start a slight turn onto that course, right? So we started that turn a little bit early, so let's go ahead and correct back until we get to it. Now, once we're over the, since we're cleared for the approach, right? Um, once we get over the Chicago Heights VR, what can we descend down to? Um, six, 1160. 1160 till Hyfax, and then after Hyfax, what can we descend down to? After Hyfax, uh, let's see, straight in for 1060. Yep, so 1060. All right, do we have any questions about the brief? Anything you'd like to add? Any concerns? No. All right, so now it's the easy part. We get to fly the approach. We're just straight in. Once we're over Chicago Heights, we'll start a nice gradual descent in. Remember the cone of confusion. Now, the nice thing is, we kid the G a little bit, right? This GPS isn't going to get a cone of confusion. So as long as we keep this one centered until we get this one officially in, but this is the official one that we're tracking. This one is for situational awareness at this point because we're shooting the VOR approach, right? Cool. Let's go ahead and... Uh, Make sure that we're 084 here so we're matched up just so we don't confuse ourselves. And let's go ahead and switch to the fullest tank and run our before landing checklist. Because we want to have all the checklists run before the final approach fix so that we can just focus on the approach coming down and in, right? Yeah. Cool. Right over there is your checklist. Oh, I got two. All right. Keeping it at 2,300 till we cross over Chicago Heights. We're a little bit high, but I'd rather you be high than low. I'm going to make a radio announcement, and then you can run that checklist, or you can confirm to me that it's been run. And I see traffic. Pep Warrior 4380 Lima is over the Chicago Heights VOR 2300. We'll be starting our descent in, shooting the VOR 8 into Griffith, Maryville. Lansing traffic. Okay, you can right. see that our airplane is going into the cone of confusion. Our VOR on top there, or our uh, CDI on top is still telling us the truth, but it's very imperative that we hold the proper heading during this, right? So we're getting a little off on our heading already. And in the cone of confusion, you really don't want to get off on your heading, right? Yeah. Because then when we pop out on the other side, you can be so far off that your needles stay pegged to the side, and now we're lost. We don't know where we're at, right? And then we have to abandon the approach and try again. Whenever we get full deflection, we have to abandon the approach, right? So 084 should be our heading. Listen to the weather one more time to remember where the winds are from. Observation 2201 Zulu weather wind Landing zero nine zero seven one four Julia Tango two miles to the east. Inbound can enter left down wind for runway zero nine Lansing. Alright, so he's to the east, he's going to be heading down here. I'll keep my eyes out for him. Nice gradual descent. Keeping that uh, heading in. We're starting to bring the BOR in here, so that's looking good. We don't need to descend any more than six or 700 feet a minute on this approach. And then we started our timer, right? As soon as we got over Chicago Heights BOR, we start our timer inbound. Because oh, our, our, timer, our timer is really important to keep our airspeed at about 90 knots. It'll be four minutes and 56 seconds, and that's when we know to go ahead and go miss. Try to center up those needles a little bit more. Little corrections, little corrections. That's, whoa, enough. Whoa, That's whoa. enough right there. Let's capture that descent. Start at the power end. Because you're coming in on your your altitude right now, right? You got to yeah. hold 1,000 what? 60. Uh, 1,160, right? Yeah. Until we get to where? 
of Hymax, which right. is uh, 5.9. Yeah, so we gotta wait till we get to 5.9 before we get the starter descent down to what? 1060. There we go. Lansing traffic, Cessna 714 Juliet Tango left down. I'm gonna go ahead and switch over to Griffin. Griffin traffic. Ah, didn't switch. Ugh, push it, push it, push it, come on. There we go. Aircraft traffic, Warrior 438, Sierra Lima, the five mile final, VUR 8, Griffin. Alright, holding our altitude, holding our needles, holding our altitude, holding our needles, right? We already have our before landing checklist done. Alright, we're coming up on high facts. Once we get over high facts, what altitude can we descend down to? 1060. Yep, 1060. Griffin Chape, Pep Warrior 438, Sierra Lima, the mile and a half final, runway 8, Griffin. You're still good to continue the approach for now. Can you expedite your departure off at 8, we're short final runway 8, Griffin. Zero time. Benton Harbor traffic, Falcon 488, Gulf Travels on a, about a 5 mile right piece, runway 28, Benton Harbor, HR, please fly. Alright, go ahead and uh, look up. And make your landing. See the runway? Yeah. Alright. And he should rotate off there momentarily. The VOR approach takes you a little bit to the left of the course, so you always have to remember just to look to the right. So if you don't see your runway right in front of you, look around a little bit. Sometimes it might be a little to the left, a little to the right, even if your needle is in the center. Not bad, not bad. Warrior 438 Sierra Lima, clear the active. Cool, cool. After landing checklist, then we can go Parker. <sighs> we'll go in, do our debrief. Call it a day. All right. Boom. I think it was productive. What do you think? Yeah, I learned a lot. Uh, we clear. We'll talk about the RNAVs and the VORs, and we'll probably try to slip an ILS in, at least one ILS in next time. We just didn't have the time today for it. All right. Have you done an ILS yet? Negative. All right, we'll do a nice talk on the ground before we do that one. All right. Well, that's how fun is done right there, man. There we go. How we do things. Another hour in the logbook. Another hour in the sky. That's what we say. Peace. Peace. And what are Saturdays for? The boys. All right, ladies and gentlemen, if you liked uh, Casey's flying or riding along with him on his uh, IFR lesson, make sure to smash that thumbs up, subscribe, give uh, Casey a good uh, critique, positive reinforcement only. It's only none the that, second lesson, take it easy. None of that, uh, none of that negative ninny stuff with no good positive uh, comments on it at all. So. Follow me on Instagram, PilotPeterson25. That's Peterson with a D. Yeah, yeah. So, who knows how this is done. But, uh, anyway, <sighs> we'll see y'all next time. Hopefully you enjoyed the flight.